I haven't personally vlogged in like months because Tony's been doing most of the vlog work, like the camera work, but I needed to get on camera because this last week has been by far and away, no holds bar, uh, the most hectic week of probably my, I'm probably forgetting, actually the time we went to OBX. With, um, this has been the most hectic week of my professional life, at least, for sure. I'm going on probably six to seven straight days of 18 plus hours of work right now. And I'm filming this on August 19th, Thursday, 11.18 a.m. The draft guide was supposed to drop. Realistically, when we first started working with the web development agency, the ETA of the launch date was July 10th. That was over a month and a week ago. That didn't happen. It's not their fault, it's not my fault. We had canceled meetings, we had a lot of, you know, whatever, didn't matter. All I needed to have it live was for August 1st. That also didn't happen. We began finishing up the draft guide, which I need to do a fuckload of content for. They had a lot of back-end work to do. I'm sorry, let me put a shirt on. We both had a shitload of stuff to do. So I'm gonna be honest, I probably wasn't even ready to launch on August 1st if, we, if, if they were ready. But neither of us were ready, we didn't have it live. Last week, Right, it's Thursday now. Last like Friday, they were like, we have no reason why we can't be live for the site on Monday morning. So I'm like, okay, let me buckle down. So starting like last Friday, I've basically been working nonstop to make sure I have everything wrapped up on my end. Because up to this point, y'all know if you purchase access to the draft guide, what we have on the site right now, bdg.store, it's the page that has like the animated graphics of the lifestyle brand thing with the pictures of the dog. That is the piece of shit website that's been up for a while. That's not the final product, obviously. We're switching over to a whole new website. Uh, what's on there is, is, is an awful product because basically what happened was we built that website started putting products or content onto it. And then I was like, no, we're starting over. I'm finding a real web development agency to bring this project to life and make sure it's a, a really well-qualified product. Once I made that decision, I basically said, I'm gonna push the entire launch date. And then the content that we're making for the new site, the new draft guide, I'm not going to push onto the old draft site and make it look like a, 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 a piece of shit product, okay? Looking back on it, now that I know we're delayed this fucking far, I probably wish I put all of the content on there just so you guys have access to it. And the last, you know, eight days or so has been just so much stuff to do with it, doing all of my rankings, which is getting the dynasty, the rookie, the season long, and then the season long, uh, one quarterback, super flex, PPR, half PPR standard. There's just like 19 sets of rankings, which is the fucking abomination of my life. I hate doing rankings. I'm sorry to all y'all that love it. Next year, you're getting my top 200 big board in half PPR in super flex, and y'all can adjust from there. But then we need to do the articles of must draft players, sleepers. Uh, the, the, the fucked up part about it is this, the data transfer moving from the old website to the new website is what takes so fucking long because the rookie dashboards, all the rookie profiles we have, have so many different intricate parts to it. So doing that, do, having to transfer each singular part of the profile 60 different times for 60 different rookies takes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end. Right now, I am just sitting waiting for the site to refresh. So we're completely done with it. They have no more work to do. I have no more content to put onto the site. We, when you transfer over hosts, hosting website, hosting services, right? Like this URL has got to go to this URL. We've got to move from Namecheap or SiteGround or whatever to Kimsta, these other hosting services. It takes one to two business days to do so. So right now I'm literally just sitting here getting dozens and dozens of emails, of YouTube comments, of Twitter DMs, of Twitter mentions, whatever. Is the draft guy live? What's good with the draft guy? What's good? I've had to refund probably 50 to, to 100 people already, which is completely fine. I'm not worried about like the money. I'm more worried about just what this says about us and as a brand. Uh, and it's really, really fucking difficult to deal with this right now. So we have the draft guide problems. On top of that, on top of that, uh, the draft weekend is coming up next weekend, okay? So Friday to Sunday, for those y'all that are new to the channel, we do a draft weekend each summer where 11 subscribers fly out from all around the country. This year, we've got two Canadians, we've got two Floridians, we've got Virginia, we've got Californians, we've got Texas, we've got all over the fucking place, Michigan, Minnesota, and if, you know, mo I'm, I'm assuming 99.9% .9 of you guys have never organized a real business oriented li live event. That is so difficult logistically to organize. There are so many pieces of it. Uh, it. It's difficult to organize and do it well. So that's a really, really difficult task for us to pull off, right? Like we have to one, keep everybody entertained. 
We have to make sure it goes smoothly. Every person is a different person. Uh, we're trying to you know, adapt to whatever they need, whatever they would enjoy for the weekend. We need to make sure that it is the experience that we pump it up to be. And it's always been good. It's always been a really, really fun weekend. So I'm not really worried about the entertainment factor. We have, uh, we have the Airbnb rented out. We're doing a birthday party on Friday night, which means basically like, I'm also, you know, if you've ever organized a big party, like you're, um, that's also just kind of thrown into the mix. So we have the draft weekend, but I'm also organizing a birthday party for Friday night for that draft weekend where I'm inviting everybody I know. So it's basically just a giant party that we're also organizing that's difficult to fucking organize as well. And then we just had the mandate in New York City come down that everybody's gonna need to be vaccinated to get into restaurants, into bars, into any indoor place starting September 12th. That came out, that news broke a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I reached out to the guys that are coming to the draft weekend and like four or five of them are not vaccinated. So I'm like, okay, we're throwing another fucking wrench into this because basically what we do is we go out at night, obviously, to like bars, rooftop bars, whatever. And if these places require vaccinated cards, then the people coming to this weekend won't be able to participate. And they're paying a lot of fucking money to come to the weekend. And I need to show them a good time. And I need to make sure that we don't show up to the bar. And then they say, oh, we need to see your vaccination cards. They don't let them in. And then I'm like, oh, fuck. Now I have to figure out a plan to pivot on, on a dime with 15 fucking people. Not an easy job to do. So we have multiple unvaccinated people. We just found out that the place we were planning to go, the rooftop that we were planning to go, Mr. Purple, on Saturday night is going to be required. Oh, yeah. So New York City, basically, it was September 12th. And I'm like, okay, we're good. Draft weekend is in August. A couple days ago, and I knew this was going to happen because the Delta variant's going all over the place, whatever. And multiple cities and states and shit outside of New York started to shut down immediately. And I'm like, New York's going to fucking move this thing up. I know they are. And then the news dropped that starting, I think it was today or maybe yesterday, that places were going to have to start transitioning into that September 12th role. And from now until then, it's going to be restaurant mandated. So if restaurants uh, want to require vaccination cards, they're allowed to do it. And a lot of places, I, I was surprised by this. The coffee shop I was in today, I think coffee a couple blocks over, required me to show them my vaccination card in order for me to sit down at a table and do work there. So the restaurants, and again, I was surprised because like the restaurant owners, I, I think it's more of like uh, what we're gonna see is chain restaurants and chain whatever are gonna be the ones that need good, I, I don't wanna say optics, right? Cause obviously COVID is a real thing and it's dangerous, but they're gonna be the ones that are more likely to shut down because when you're like an individual restaurant owner, you felt the fucking, like your entire livelihood is baked into your one restaurant, right? So you felt the effects of COVID, you felt the effects of not having indoor dining. So when the state says you need to require vaccine cards, which is gonna eliminate, you know, 20 to 30% of your customers, the people who are one individual owner are gonna be like, fuck that. I am not closing my shit down until the very last state mandated minute. So Think Coffee is a chain restaurant. Mr. Purple is owned by like, it's one of those rooftops that, that's on a hotel that's owned by a chain of different hotel chains. So the CEO or whatever, the owner of the hotel chains is, the, is gonna be the one that mandates it, right? That was where we were going. Now we just found out they're gonna require backs. But everything up to that point, Friday we have the draft, Friday night we have the party, which is at the Airbnb, so we don't have to worry about vaccinations. The place we're going for a Saturday morning, we're gonna wake up, play some pickup basketball, play some pickup football, go to a fucking bottomless mark brunch. The place we're going for brunch is not gonna require vaccination, so we're good there. We're gonna hop around the city, maybe hit the park, maybe hit some other bars. And then Saturday night is the big problem right now because we don't know where we're gonna go if all these places are going to require vaccination cards prior to September 12th. So you throw that wrench into it. So we've got the draft guy problems, we've got the draft weekend problems, we've got, um, we've got other fucking problems, I know that very clearly just by looking at me. But I mean, on top of it, on top of all of this, if none of that was a problem, this is also the busiest time of the year for content. This is the most important time of the year for YouTube content. I need to make sure I am getting out videos every single day and they are the best pieces of content that I make all year because y'all are flocking to YouTube by the second. I mean, we grew more in the last 30 days. I think we're up six to 7,000 subscribers in the last 30 days. We grew more in the last 30 days than we did in the last 330 days, okay? So my livelihood, realistically, while it revolves around YouTube and content creation, my livelihood revolves around YouTube videos in August and September, realistically. That makes everything in my life go. So while I'm dealing with all these other side problems, right? I have to worry about fucking uh, the draft guide 
being up because I need to stop refunding everybody money because I need to fucking make money to make a living. Then we got the draft weekend, which is a whole problem in its own right, but I can't look at that right now. It's like six days away and I don't have fucking time to deal with these problems. But I need to make sure that no matter what, everything is on the back burner next to YouTube content. This is the busiest fucking time of the year for YouTube content because we're gonna grow in the next, in the next 30 days. We're probably gonna bring in another 10, 15, 20,000 subscribers if we do this correctly. So I need to make sure that is my main focus. Like I can't slip up on that. So and I need to make sure I'm drinking enough Mars. I don't even have the fucking microphone plugged in. God damn it, Nick. I'm gonna put you on so I can continue filming with clear audio. All right, we're bike. Yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I know I haven't been good at vlogging because I've been so focused on all this other bullshit and vlogging is usually very important to me. I've also noticed that it's kind of taken a backseat in my priorities, which is which is kind of sad when I step back and look at it because it's always been like a passion of mine to share my, share my ups and downs, my lifestyle, my raw emotions and shit. And I think that's what's helped me connect with you guys so closely and what's helped me build this brand successfully, like really build a strong foundation is me getting to know you guys and vice versa. Uh, so it's kind of sad when I skip out on pieces of content like this and when I do really feel some type of way about whatever it is like when i'm really really in inside of myself inside of my head in in a certain emotional state i feel like it's really important for me to share it with you know with people in my life but especially you guys and not even you guys honestly like i just open up to the camera way way more easily than i do to a lot of other things i think that's why i started youtube in the first place was that it's just a, a really easy way for me to express myself and it's funny because I was, who was I with the other day? I can't remember who I was having dinner with or coffee with or something, but they were asking me about, actually it was the owner of the web development agency I'm working with. Uh, they were asking me about public speaking. And he asked me, he's like, if I'm good at public speaking. And I said, I, I mean, I'm not bad at it, but I'm not, it's definitely not like a strong suit. And you might find that kind of ironic because like when I, like this video, I feel like I'm talking to nobody. I feel like I'm so easily able to open up myself, but I understand that, you know, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, sometimes the fantasy videos, you know, get a hundred thousand views, that many people are gonna listen to it. Like a fucking football stadium filled of people who's gonna listen to what I'm about to say, but I don't get nervous whatsoever doing this kind of shit. You could probably just tell by how I'm talking to you. Public speaking, yeah, a lot more nerve wracking. And, and he was like, ah, oh, that's, he's like, I'm not surprised at all. And I was, I found that interesting because I've always wondered that. People are always like, oh, you know, you don't like, like speaking on stage, you don't like speaking in front of people. And again, not that I don't like doing that. It's just, I'm definitely not like a strong suit of mine when I open up so easily on camera. And he's like, yeah, well, when you're in a room of people, you're feeding off their energy, right? Like in a camera, you're just talking to a lens, but when you're talking to people, you're not just talking to nothing. You're talking to, like you're, you're feeding off the energy and you're feeding off of reactions and emotions and, uh, and that stuff really wraps up in your mind. And I, I found that really interesting because normally like in social settings, I'm really aware of other people's energies and if things get like weird or awkward or whatever the case may be, it's, it, it's obvious to me in situations like, sorry, I just got a text from Steve asking me about the party. How many people we think come into this? Good question. Dude, I really don't know. I texted ev like fucking every friend I have, told them about the party and then also said, bring any friends that you have. The Airbnb is massive and the guy when he was giving us the tour of it was dead ass like, uh, you can hold an event here for like 200 people. I don't think we're gonna have 200 people there. I doubt we'll ha even have 100 people there, maybe like 50. 50 to 70, but I just told everybody to tell everybody. So, oh, uh, fuck, I don't know. Um, thank God for Steve and Kelly, my sister, are helping me plan the weekend. Uh, I can't do that by myself. Yeah, that's that's really all I've got for you guys. I just needed to get this out there and uh, kind of get it off my chest because as we grow, like especially during the summer months, I hate missing out on vlogs and like opening up to you guys because we have so many new people coming in. And it makes me so, it weirds me out when we have, you know, like, I have an entire 15% of my entire audience is new people that have never, like I started doing vlogs four years ago when I first left my full-time job and I was working out of my mom's house. So a lot of y'all have been like riding with me since then. So you know about, like you know everything about me and you know how I am, but new people come in and you know, they have a perception of me. I just, I just, I don't know. I want, the, I want them to feel comfortable when they come onto my channel, when they watch my videos and just know who I am as a person. That's like the most important thing to me. So. Uh, when new people do come in, I want them to see like this side of me. So that's uh, that's what I got. I got to go back to stressing, obviously, because I have a lot to stress about. I don't have time for this shit anymore. Not in this economy. What am I doing for the rest of the day? 
dude, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm literally just sitting and fucking waiting because I need the site to refresh. And I texted them and they're not, there's something up right now. There's something up right now because I texted both guys that I'm working with. And I was like, just to confirm, you're not waiting on anything else from me and vice versa, right? We're just waiting on the URL to refresh to the new site. I sent out like five hours ago and then I followed up with the other guy an hour ago and I haven't got a response from either of them. Something's fishy here and I don't fucking like it. Oh man, I'm sorry. All right, I gotta go. I love you guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you. See you when I'm up. See you. See you.